So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole's like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I think that's uh, uh, We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. Thanks for joining us here for another episode of By the By. Uh, We have been doing a bit of traveling around Australia, which is why you're of late hearing (laughs) reviews of several different (laughs) sex clubs. Um, Recently, we're in Brisbane, so you heard that one, uh, the Mike's Place review. Yep. And before that, even, we were out in Perth, and so one night while there, we decided to go to the Pleasure Lounge. So that, some hammering going on out yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lot of hammering. Yeah. People are banging. Wow. <laughs> it's not us. Stop your banging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we went to the Pleasure Lounge there in uh, Perth, and that, it was a, a fun evening. Yes, um, it was not what I expected. I would say that. Okay, let's it, start with what did you expect? I don't know. I, I, as always, all places get compared back to our secret spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's what I was expecting. It's a place that was similar to, in in feel and size to our secret spot. Or even couples club, similar in size to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's what I was expecting. Something about that size. And uh, the Pleasure Lounge was definitely smaller than that yeah i would say if you look at square footage it was smaller yeah and now the layout was big and open but the layout was big and open yeah i guess we'll get to that yeah um so first of all it is um it's in a i'm gonna say an industrial area and it's not too very far from the casino Correct. so the cab driver takes us (laughs) and drops us off near a car lot yeah, and he was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> All right. And it's of course dark. There's yeah. a couple of lights at the car lot, but mostly it's this big dark place. And he's like, "Are you sure you want me to drop you off here?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's cool." And we get out and we've got our bottle, two bottles of wine. Yeah, uh, we're like, "Yeah, it's cool. We're going to a, a house party." Woo! <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're just going to a house party at a friend's place. It's fine." So we let us off there and. And we went around, you go in through the back, and so we went, of course, yeah. There's a pun there. Uh, Yeah. And so we we walk up, and um, we're greeted at the door. They have a a little entryway where we stopped and uh, chatted a bit there. Yep, I do like that. You walk in, there's a little desk, and this is completely segregated from the rest of the club. So Yeah, there's another door to go through still. It gives them an opportunity to say, ah, yeah, you're not welcome here. (laughs) Go away. Um, and you can't see anything at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so when we got there, though, there was a lady who was also working there. Mm-hmm. Um, as we walked in, she was talking to, I'm going to say the owner guy. Um, I don't remember. I, I'm terrible with names. I don't remember his name. Um, but we we talked to him a bit, and she was, she was all excited about something. Um, and I remember when we walked in, she goes, and he wants to play. And then she did her little, like, Tasmanian devil spin around excitement and then took off into the main club, which was both a little intimidating but actually quite endearing as well because he goes, yeah, we have somebody who's a little famous here today, and and uh, she's, she's all excited. And we're mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and so we talked to him for, for a wee bit. It was Wayne. That's his name. Wayne. That's yes. right. Oh. I don't remember her name, though. Yeah. I, don't, I should. I should remember, yeah. I'm really terrible with names. And I drank a lot, and I've slept since then. <laughs> um, yeah, it was funny, because we did. We sat and chatted with him for a little bit first, and she was a bit like a Tasmanian devil, whirling in, whirling out. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I, it was, she was really excited, which is a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he went through the typical first-timer thing, you know, it's this... Is this your first time to a club? Is this your first time to our club? Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Um, 
and I don't know what we're doing wrong in answering these questions from all these places, but we've yet to actually get a tour of a of a place. It could just be because you've been to a club. They assume, oh, you know how it works. Yeah, You'll figure it out. And that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> You're um, a smart person. <laughs> but every club we have ever been to, yes, I'm going to say that. Yeah. Every club we've ever been to, we have never been given the proper tour by the people who actually work there. Now, the first time we went to Our Secret Spot, we were given a tour by C&D. Um, because it was New Year's Eve, and they New- were covered up yeah. trying to give everybody tours. And they knew, yeah. you know, they knew us, so they, of and they course, knew gave C&D us the tour. And they knew C&D knew the place, yeah. Um, you know, and even like the first place in the house in North Carolina, we were given a tour by friends, not yeah. by the people who run it. Uh, both places in New York... It's just kind of funny. We've been to multiple clubs recently, and it's just sort of like we've never gotten the official, official tour. That's so funny. Yeah. So now the first club that gives me an official tour gets a hug. <laughs> um, or a moonin'. I don't know. One of those two. Both. <laughs> Maybe a little Can't bit. Can't it be both? Can't it be both? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we walked in, and they had this huge bar, like huge bar area. Mm-hmm. Um, which was kind of cool. It was nice because they had bar stools in front of it. Um, you know, it was just a big social area, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we dropped our, our wines off. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm trying to think the what we did. So the let's go through the basic layout first. Okay. Because as you go through the main door, the, the bar was to the right. Mm-hmm. It was a long bar to the right. Yep. And there were two restrooms to the left. Correct. And then... Um, Behind the restroom, so on the other side of the, the wall there, there was a hot tub. Yep. So the, the spa for the Australian people. <laughs> uh, so there was a spa there on the left. The big main floor, it was this big, huge room that, that you walked into. And there were high-top tables. There were some lounges set up. Yep. It was just a big social area. Yeah, it was a huge social area, but... It was it was full of either high top tables and chairs or little lounging chairs with little small tables, tables, small tables yeah. around. So and it was definitely set up conducive to talk in small groups, mm-hmm. uh, three to four to maybe five. Yeah. Um, and there was a pole way off to the right towards mm-hmm. that end of the room, and a couch on the other side of it, so you could sit and watch if you wanted to. Yep. Um, and then and then around the perimeter past the spa is where the room started. Right. And so the first room was a little private room, which you could close the door. Um, It had a glass wall, but the glass was tinted, Mm -hmm. except for about a 10 centimeter um, strip through the middle. So if you'd gone into that room and didn't lower the blinds, people could look in and watch. Um, Or you could lower the blinds. So you had the option uh, either way. Yeah. The next room was a big room, which I think had at least... Three, I would say three king, king size, size beds. beds. Yeah, and I think there's maybe a table and chairs in there as mm-hmm. well. Um, and then the last room was their voyeur room. It was huge. Which was huge. Which is probably the size of our bedroom here. I would have said even bigger. Um, it had an ensuite bathroom on yeah. it, and then it had a massage table in there, mm-hmm. and then it had this big Austin Powers style white circular bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but the and there was a uh, little sofa lounge on the wall oh, as yeah, well, so you right. can sit and watch what's going on in there. Um, but the kicker was that one whole wall of that room was clear glass, um, which faced out onto the the, the social area, the, the, the bar, large lounge area, mm-hmm. uh, which I actually really liked that room. I yeah, that, was... that entire wall was glass, so you could see everything from the lounge on the one side, the big yep. round bed. You could see the massage tables, even the shower yep. in that little ensuite area because there wasn't a door to that. Um, so you could see everything that was going on in that room, and it was kind of fun. I it, thought that was a great yeah. idea. Um, of course, they had, I think, big purple velvet curtains that you could close if you wanted to. We never saw them We closed. never saw them mm-hmm. close, um, which I think is a is a pretty big plus, yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the first thing that I noticed that I missed was locker area. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no place to dress down. In fact, now we've told you everything that was in the club. Um, and it was a, it was a good size. Um, yeah. Uh, but there was no dress-down area. There was no locker area. And at first, 
you know, I kind of thought since we didn't get the tour, I was like, well, maybe I missed something. Yeah. But then I start looking around and I noticed that all the ladies still have their purses. A couple had jackets. So they're not putting their stuff down anywhere. You know, they're keeping it with them. And so that was clue number two that there were no lockers <laughs> was that we didn't see them and everybody still has their stuff with them. And later on in the evening, we were talking to another couple that had been a, a few, fair few times and we made the comment about that it was that there was no real dress down area. There were the two restrooms, but there was no locker room or really any place to put your stuff. And he made the comment that, oh, there's some shelves over there. And way back in one of the corners, there were some, some shelves. And yeah, like the little backpack shelves. Like that, little cubicle the gym, type things. Little cubbies. Yeah. yeah. And so he's like, you know, you can always put your stuff there if you want to. But nobody was. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, sure. Um, and the, I only thought that was odd because then... It didn't really encourage dress down of any kind. Most people kept whatever clothes they had on, on, and yeah. which was not what I was expecting because I had taken some thigh highs and stuff to put on because I was planning on dressing down. And because that never happened, then I just ended up in the skirt and top that I had on. Yeah, and you even had a jacket, right, that we were carrying around. Yeah. It was cool at night. Yeah. Um, so you even had a jacket you were carrying around. And yeah. And it's just like, uh, I really miss that. I think that, you know, if you're if you're – if you've got a location where you're wanting people to get naked and play, you need to make it conducive to them getting naked and playing. Mm. Um, but that, you know, honestly, that that's the only negative I can come up with mm-hmm. with it. Um, I thought the size to play area was great. I thought it was interesting that the spa was right out in the open. The spa is on, like you said, one side wall. There was no wall or barrier between but nothing. Yeah. yeah, but there's no wall or barrier between the spa and the, and again, like much like the voyeur room, there's no delineation between the mm-hmm. spa and the social area. Mm-hmm. So the one couple, two couples that we saw get in, you know, they just strip down right there and they hop in the spa and then yeah. they're there chatting while the rest of the world is out sitting around and chatting. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of, I liked that. I thought that was a plus to the spa because I think a lot of people can use the spa. You know, it's a great icebreaker, but at the same time, it's also a bit of a place where some people run and hide because in most clubs, the spa is set away. I think of our secret spot. The club or the spa is kind of at a dead mm-hmm. end unless you're a smoker. And same um, thing with couples club. Couples it's club, it's separated. It's even hidden around a corner. Behind lockers, yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's not conducive to, I don't know, like in this place, However, you could be is, in the spa and people could just walk up to the spa and start chit-chatting with you. True. But then again, the spa is also big enough that it's not like you're hiding away with your partner and that's it. Well, of course, know? yeah. But, you know, it's... The spa always takes a little bit of effort to get into. Yeah. You know, you have to dress down completely, or at least if you have your swimmers on, you know, or you have to, I don't know, it's, it's a it's I, And I think having it out in the open is good for a place where you have a lot of regulars. If you're a place where you get transient people coming yeah. through and newbies, that could be a little intimidating. And that's true. I would agree with to that To be out well. in the open yeah. with everyone who's sitting around their normal clothes watching you get naked yeah. and get into it. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that, so it has its pluses and minuses, yeah. but I think it largely depends on what's your normal crowd. You know, is it a lot of regulars and people that come often and may know each other or true. at least be comfortable with that? Or do you get people passing through, newbies? You know, then I think being a little more segregated is good. Yeah. Um, I thought the clientele was interesting. Uh, it was a wide range was of people. a much wider range yes. of people than I expected. Because there was uh, two couples that sat in the center of the room for mm-hmm. most of the time. And they had clearly known each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. Good, like, had, you could feel the, the friendship, like the good long-term friendship between them. I think that they were at least in their late 50s, if not I would have said one of them was. I think one would have been in their 60s. Yeah, I was going to say in that late 50s, early 60s. But they looked like a lot of fun, though. They looked like they were were a hoot. And the one dude, the later it got, the more he drank. His shirt started out with just the top button unbuttoned, Mm -hmm. and then the next button became unbuttoned. About every 30 minutes, a button would come undone. You could almost (laughs) tell the time by counting the number of unbuttoned (laughs) buttons he had. And it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, and, and they were out having, dancing on the dance floor yeah, and yeah, having a, having a good old time, um, making out on the dance floor later in the evening. Yeah. Yep. Um, there was some young couples and that was another interesting thing. The, the older couples, I'm going to say the 
couples that were in their 40s and older, you mm-hmm. could tell were a lot more comfortable in their skin yeah. than the younger yeah. couples. And I would say the the median age was probably 40. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would agree. Um, there was a couple couples um, that were, I would have said, in their early 20s. Mm-hmm. And then a large, a vast majority of the group was plus 40. Mm-hmm. Um, but the younger couples just sort of sat off to the edge and didn't do a lot of talking until later. They didn't really interact with other people other than themselves much. And they were very closed off. They yeah. were to the side. Their body language was closed off. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't very comfortable looking, I would say. No, they didn't look like they were... Yeah. Some of them didn't look like they were having a good time. Well, Again, I would say they had changed. a good time, but, but there's... No, I mean in the beginning. They were just okay. like yeah. trying... I'm trying to come up with a good analogy. It's like, not frigid, but you know, they were they were tense. stiff and tense. Yeah. yeah. And they hadn't warmed up to the whole thing yeah. yet. Whereas the older couples came in and you could tell they were instantly like, all right, let's have some fun. Yeah. You know, looking yeah. around and smiling and yada, yada. Um Wide range of body shapes and sizes. Mm-hmm. Um, some people who are on on the plus side. Some people who are on the you need to eat a sandwich side. <laughs> um, so I thought that was also interesting. And you know, another thing we saw was a lot of communication between really yeah. everybody. Yeah. Everybody talked to somebody at some point in the night. There's a lot of movement around between yeah. the tables and the groups, and yeah. Um, and then it was also a single guys night. Yes. Yeah, so there were three or four single guys that I took notice of in particular. Um, And there were two, I would say, that I was interested in. One of them was hard to talk to and start a conversation with, so I kind of dismissed him pretty early. Um, But the other one, uh, we saw him playing early on. He was a beautiful specimen. But we saw him playing early on, so we were kind of like, oh, okay, well, there's that. As if, almost as if our chance was gone there. Yeah, um, yeah. But then he came back out and was ready to go. We well, we it, caught him in passing as he came out. Yeah, so what happened was the in the voyeur room, we were sitting next to yeah. in a high top table next to the glass wall because we wanted to be able to see all the people on the floor, and then we also wanted to be able to see what was going on in the voyeur room. Yeah. Um, and so at one point, there was a, couple with a single guy on Mm -hmm. the bed and they were playing and I will say it goes back to that kind of awkwardness of not having her dress down the lady was basically just hiking her skirt up and pulling her panties to the side and the one dude had his pants off but still had his white button up shirt on still had his shirt on Um, and then the other guy the the single guy was naked yeah Um, and so then while that was going on the guy that uh, you're talking about he came in and sat on the sofa watching okay and then the lady who we first saw who worked there came in and started talking to him oh that's right yeah Yeah, okay i've forgotten about that part and then instantly pounced on him basically yeah and then took him to one of the other big rooms the one with the three king size one with the three king size beds and they had their play in there Mm -hmm. um and so we figured oh well he's probably done for the night but then he came out and we saw him at the bar um, and that's when I spoke to him for the first time, mm. uh, just basically a hello. I was walking back from the bathroom, um, and we talked for a minute, and then the other couple who had been playing with the other single fella came back in. We assumed that they had left, but they came back in, um, and basically it was almost shoved me out of the way to talk to this guy, and then she didn't even... I didn't. I can. T- I can just tell you from from this. I didn't like either of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't terribly friendly. They. I didn't think they presented well. Um, but and they were those type that type of couple that don't take no for an answer because I think she grabbed him by the wrist, not by the hand, and just basically led him. Now, arguably, he could have said no, no, thank you, or fought more. But he went along with them, and they played a bit again in the voyeur room. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when the the couple that we actually talked to came up and spoke with us. So while that was yeah, going on in really there, yeah, we had a really good conversation. We had a with great them. conversation with yeah. a couple that had been I'm going to use air quotes regulars. Mm-hmm. I think they'd been three or four three times. three or four times. I think yeah. Um, yeah, but they played in the voyeur room, and then we talked with this couple and the subject of bisexuality because it was clear that the couple that we both thought didn't present well mm-hmm. were bisexual. Um, 
There was some male male touching. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was more normal male male, more relaxed male male touching mm-hmm. than we're used to seeing. Mm-hmm. And when we asked this couple who were regulars, they both were like, oh gosh, no. <laughs> like, yeah. Because um, they even asked us, you know, what, how do we play? Yeah. And I, you know, mentioned the puppy pile and this kind of thing. And, and they were like, oh, we're soft swap only. And it's like, well, that's that's fine. You know, yeah. we like to do that too. And but then the yeah, once we got into the whole bisexuality thing, he was clearly not comfortable with yeah, that. Yeah, he completely closed off. She and, was kind of okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> and she was like, even uh, of course, yeah. sort of liking the idea of two guys playing. Yeah. Um, which again, guys, ladies like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not the only ones that like watching their partners play with the same sex. Um, but yeah, so after they were. Done. I think he tuned out after he that. He tuned part. out basically. Yeah. yeah, we we completely lost him there. Which okay, um, it's not for everyone. No. Um, but the couple left the single dude alone in the in the voyeur room, and uh, about that time, I looked at you. and was like, "Hey, do you want to play?" And she's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Oh, you want to put on a show?" You're like, "Fuck yeah!" So we went into the voyeur's room, um, and we through playing and back and forth, we ended up both naked. Which I think, other than a couple of single guys, we were the fir- you were the first female that was completely naked in this place. Yeah. Um, so we start playing a little, and then we start playing a lot. Not, not many firsts left for me there. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last woman naked. I don't think that'll ever happen. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, we started playing a little. And I remember at one point sort of taking a breather and looking up and looking around and counting no less than 12 people watching us. Um, and it was, there were a fair number in the room yeah, as well, yeah. like just standing there. Well, we had, you know, the fellow that was still laying on the bed. He mm-hmm. never gave up his spot on the bed. Um, then we had a couple sitting on the little sofa, mm-hmm. two couples in the doorway. I think there were two couples in the glass window. So that's two, four, six, eight, now ten. Then there was a couple on the massage table, twelve, and then a couple... There was another couple standing next to the massage yeah. table. So yeah. that's 14 people and then 15 if you count mm-hmm. the dude. And I'm sure we're missing a couple of people, one no. or twos. Uh, but, yeah, so we put on a pretty good show. Um, and when we were done, the the guy, he was like, that was hot. And that's when we were like, ah, you have an American accent. <laughs> so we started talking to him. Um, yeah, so we talked to him a bit for a while. A while. Yeah. You know, you know. In swinger time, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> swinger time. <laughs> it's like dog years. It, it ages, dif- ages you differently. Um, and I know we got drinks and talked to him for a bit. Mm-hmm. We stood at the bar and chatted with him yeah. for a while. And then at some point, um, because we, mm. Mr. Yeah, go ahead. I know where you're going with this now. So, yeah, Mr. Adam and I, I think he went to the restroom yeah. uh, and excused himself to go to the restroom. And so we were kind of like, you know, we really want to play with him. We're both really interested in him. He's a nice guy. He's fucking hot as but, hell. But he's already been two, through two rounds. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> do we do it? Do we not? And then, you know, and I looked at Mr. Adam and I was like, are you going to regret not doing this if we don't? And, well, and as a lead up to that, at one point at the bar, I point blank, blank asked him. I say, so are you bisexual? But yeah. After seeing, and he was like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And that then he he went into the room and then that's when you were like are you going to regret this if you don't do this and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And the and, the, and even though you hesitated I could see that the answer was yes. So it's like all right, let's do this. Yeah. And, and yeah. so he came out of the room and then we basically walked right up to him before someone else could grab him and we were like, "Hey, do you want to play?" And he was like, "Uh, yes." Um, and to give a little background on this guy, um he was the famous person that they were all talking about, and he was built like He's Adonis. chiseled. Yes. Yeah. Like, made out of clay, like Michelangelo's David. Um, like, yeah, it was... I have never in my life touched someone so firm. Yeah. Fine yeah. There. He had a, a lot of well-defined muscles. I mean, he was gorgeous anyway because he had a cute face on him, and, yeah. and to boot, he was nice to talk to. Yeah, he was so. a good personality. Yeah. yeah, and he was... Yeah, kind of awesome. Um, so we played with him for. Well, we went into a while. the room that had the um, the blinds, the private yes. room. So we because we went in and we knew that, that there was going to be guy on guy play, and not everybody's comfortable watching that. So we went into that little room, closed the door. Yep. And 
The curtains were, the blinds were open, so that little section people could look through if they wanted to. And I did see some people looking through from time to time, because uh, they kind of have to kneel on the couch and bend down a little, yeah. but we saw some people watching. But yes, yeah, so we went in there to play with him, just to be a little more private, not only because we selfishly wanted to play with him ourselves. Yeah, it was mostly but that for me. Also, there was, you know, just not everybody really wants to see the guy on guy, and Yeah. Yeah, and uh, but there was enough. There was a number of people that would watch for a little while yeah. and then move along. Yeah. Um, again, most of them ladies. Um, Saw a couple guys though. Yeah, but the vast yeah. majority of they were of mostly watching ladies, the yeah. guy on guy was were ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, but it was good. He was, you know, and it was nice because he was. As he said, you know, one hundred percent bisexual, and he was very fluid. I would say he took more to you than to me. Which is fine, um, but he was very fluid in moving back and forth between us, and yeah. it was it was was more puppy pile like in yeah. that whoever was in front of you, whatever was in front of you, you were you were touching or kissing or whatever, and and it was just nice because it felt a lot more natural yeah. because of that. You know, not having to hold back, you weren't holding back, he wasn't holding back, um, and there was some conversation between you two as to who likes what and whatever and. Yeah, I think that's what made it a lot more fun and pleasurable for us was the fact that he was so fluid going back and forth between us. And whether he was playing with you, he was playing with me, you were playing with me, no matter what was going on, it just felt very natural. And there was no awkwardness as to, ooh, is this okay or is this not okay? Yeah, and it was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed like like you said, that that ease of fluidity between mm-hmm. really the three of us, mm-hmm. um, because that's rare and hard to find. And you know, to find somebody who, even though he may lean one way or the other, to be equally in, interested in both yeah. of us was really kind of nice. Um, yeah, and so so we yeah we uh, we played with him for well they basically knocked on the door and was like hey guys you gotta go <laughs> it's two a.m. time yeah. to go. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so we finished up and, uh, we then went out and wandered around, you know, at that point there were still people running around crazy trying to find their clothes. <laughs> um, went up to the bar, you know, gave him our card, talked to them. And then the, the owner guy, Wayne, uh, mm-hmm. asked us if he was like, Hey, would you like to come back to my place? We're going to have some drinks. We can talk, blah, blah, blah. Because we had mentioned to him the sex set in the city and, and yeah. the podcast and whatnot. And at that point, honestly, I was absolutely just you beat. You were shattered, yeah. Yeah, because um, being well, on Perth time, yeah. but still uh, probably physically on Sydney time, I didn't know what time it was, but it was I was exhausted. Yeah, and I'd been in Perth for the week, so I was on that time zone, but I could tell that you were about to crash. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, you know, part of me was, I want to go back and, and chat and, you know, have some conversation with them. But at the same time, I could tell that you were about to pass out. Yeah. And, and it's and like, was. we should probably get you back to the hotel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, you know, it was definitely, you know, it was definitely a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. It was fun. Um, and then when we went to leave, the Uber driver <laughs> came to pick us up. And well, first of all, somebody, we went to the main road out front to, yeah. to get an Uber and somebody else's Uber driver stopped. We knew it couldn't be ours cause it was way too quick. And he stopped and he, and he told us who he was looking for. We're like, Oh, they're around behind. We told him how to get there. And he was like, are you sure? We're like, yes, yes. Just go down and whatever. And he's like, you could tell he was very hesitant because yeah. it was, yeah. you know, a dark little alley <laughs> kind of place. And, and we were like, just go back there. It's fine. There's a heap of people back there because everybody was standing out still talking and whatever. And it was well lit behind the building. Oh, yeah. It was very well lit. Yeah. I mean, it's it was dark in the alleys to get to the well lit yeah. part. But, you know, there was definitely a light at the end of that yeah. tunnel. Yeah. Um, and it was fine. Uh, and then our Uber driver came and he's looking around and he's like, where were you? And we're like, oh, we're at a warehouse party at a Did friend's place. Did you come place. from the and casino? Like, uh, dude, the casino is like two and a half K away. We didn't walk. To- <laughs> yeah. He, he asked if we came from the casino. We're like, no, we we're just at a friend's place. He's like, are you, are you sure? And he's looking around trying to figure out where this place is. Yeah, it was great. It was- <laughs> we're like, just take us to the hotel. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor Uber driver. I, I know. They probably see all kinds of stuff though. I, I imagine so. It's like the cabbies from yeah. the day. It's like the next HBO special is going to be Uber Confessionals. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, you know, all in all, I, I really liked the club. If mm-hmm. we were back in Perth, I would, without even thinking about it, um, go back. Yeah. Um, 
the only negative I can really think about is the lack of lockers, mm-hmm. actual locker space. Not or having dress down a place area. to put yourself yeah. and dress down and, yeah. You know, making a place where it's conducive to dress down. Um, but if that's the only negative I can come up with. Yeah. Uh, everybody, the staff there were super friendly. Oh, super friendly. Um, yeah. You know, the the clientele there were super friendly. Um, it was a very laid back, relaxed feel to it. Yeah. And maybe that's just Australia in general. I don't know. But it <laughs> was just, it just felt, you know, it's that comfortableness again. Yeah. And it, it again, you, like you said, it's one of those places where you can go and sort of everybody knows why you're there. Yeah. So you don't have to really put on a filter or put on some sort of show. You just... You're you. That's why we like swinger clubs. Exactly. Um, but, you know, and even the one guy that came up to you who was on the tipsy side and he went to kiss you and you just kind of put your hand up on his chest and went, no, thank you. Well, he did. Admittedly, he was, I would say, quite drunk at that point. It was late in the evening. And it was he, late. Yeah. he asked if he could have a kiss. Yes. And I almost was going to give him a peck on the cheek until he pulls out his tongue and starts wiggling it in this creepy kind of way <laughs> that only a drunk person can do and I was like no no thanks yeah, not gonna okay. do that no, now thank you and you put your hand on yeah. his chest and he went okay and then wondered yeah. why it's like that again I like that it's the um, no means no even when you're wasted yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I would if you're ever in in the Perth area I would highly highly yeah, recommend uh, swinging by um, and, and taking a look it mm. was um, it was a lot of fun you know and I'm thinking are there are there other clubs in Perth? Um, that couple mentioned one other one. Oh, that's right. I do. I yeah. don't remember the name of it, yeah. but they mentioned some other one. Um, but I think they had not had the greatest of experience their first time there. But again, it's, you know, I still say you have to go back two times or so just to be sure that it wasn't that particular night. Because you never know the clientele that are going to be there. You mm-hmm. know, some, cli- some nights it's really great and some nights it's not. We happened to go on a non-theme night. We did. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it wasn't... It also makes a difference, I think, not just clientele, but whether it's a busy night or a slow night and which works better for you. Because some couples like busy nights and some couples like slow nights. So that's why I think you have to go at least twice before. If you don't like a place, before making a final judgment, I would say go again. Just to see, you know, was it that particular night or is it something about the inherent setup or feel or whatever that you truly don't like. Yeah. Um, because I will accept that you don't like a place, but at the same time, it could just be the clientele or if it was too busy, too slow, whatever for your liking, give it another chance. Um, so, yeah. yeah. But So I think there is another, maybe at some point we'll check that out. Not that we get to Perth very often. Yeah. But <laughs> well, we really did like this place, though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the folks were so nice. Yeah, they were yeah. really good people. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I liked it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other things you want to say about about the pleasure lounge? <laughs> no. Yeah, we've got time for one, if not two, questions right. now. Um, so you got something from the vaults? I do have. So this was um, when we were talking with someone, one of our listeners. We were talking with them on Twitter about they were asking questions about being in a sex, cl- sex club for the first time or swingers club for the first time. Okay. okay. And playing in front of other people. And we're very much exhibitionists. Yeah. We clearly don't mind playing in front of other people. Um, As you just heard from the previous story. Yes, exactly. And so they were asking, you know, how it is when we're playing in front of other people, how do we feel? Like, what do we what do we see? What, how do we feel about that? Um, and... And I think it's really interesting because a lot of people will say, do you like to play in front of other people? But they don't ask the, how does it make you feel? And that's kind of a little one step further that was like, huh, how does it make me feel? (laughs) I I never really thought about that too much before. Would you like to answer? Well, maybe. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So I, I like to, I like to play in front of other people. I like, I like the whole putting on a show thing. I know, you know, we've both done, um, some web, some webcam stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've kicked around getting back into the webcam stuff. Um, but for me, what I, the, the specific, how does it make you feel? How do you feel? That's, a, that's actually a, a difficult question. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say like, one of the things that I really like about it is sort of showing you off. Um, because, you know, you are that sort of classic physical beauty that we that many people see as attractive. You're 
uh, got an hourglass figure, you know, you big breasts, big ass, small waist. Um, but even more over than that, I mean, and the, just the general beauty that you have, um, you're also clearly having fun and enjoying it. Um, and it's, so it's not just this surface beauty. There's this kind of passion and grr that you have that I think really comes across when I'm using air quotes again, performing. Um, so when we play in front of people like at pleasure lounge or at our secret spot, when we go up to either the big room or even to the, the BDSM room and start Mm -hmm. playing around, there's that, there's that pride I think that comes with, you know, your, uh, you're enjoying something. You're enjoying that you're doing it either to or with me or having something done to you um, that I'm also a part of. And so it's sort of that, I'm going to say it like a like in a musical sort of sim, um, um, metaphor. It's that, you know, I'm part of an ensemble. You know, sure, it could be fun to watch somebody play by themselves, but when it's a group, and you're part of this team that's that's performing. It's even better and more fulfilling. Um, I just went on a really deep tangent. I was gonna say I'm not sure I can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's how I feel. It's like it is. It's that I'm part of something bigger than me, and mm-hmm. the two of us are greater than the sum of either of our parts. Um, but when we mash those parts together in a <laughs> kind of thing, and a little bit of <laughs> and a ooh and a ah. Uh, and then that part, I mean, it's like this orchestra of love. Just do it yourself. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an orchestra of love. Would you like to see the first movement? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so for me, I would say it's it's a lot of very much the same. Um, because we do both like to be to perform, you know, we don't mind being naked in front of other people, so we're not self-conscious at all. We're very comfortable with ourselves. Um Probably me a little more than you. Yes, well, that's funny that you mentioned that because <laughs> I always feel like I'm so self-conscious about myself. I'm like, but you don't act it. Well, I if don't act are, it, but I'm it. totally freaking yeah. out. Every time I'm naked in front of people, I'm freaking out. Um, but yeah, it's. But you're. I, I guess you're right. I, I don't act like I'm self-conscious. I am no. totally self-conscious. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, I, you know, it's we're both, at least, appear to be comfortable <laughs> being naked in front of other people. Um, but I would say that part of what I like about it is that I can show off your talents because you are so good, especially with your mouth. And, and I want people to see that, and then maybe later they can enjoy being the recipient of that as well. Um, but I like... To, to show what you can do and and how much fun we have together. And I think when we're playing and, like, really focused on each other, to me, everybody else melts away. Yeah. And it is just us. And it's just that connection between us. Um, sometimes if we're playing in a group and other people are watching, it's the same thing. I'm focused on on the partners. But that's where my passion is. And, and I think that's part of why I... I like it or, and don't mind people watching is because I want them to see that this, this can be fun and that you can really enjoy this. And these are all the things you can do. Um, and admittedly, when we play at the clubs with other people around, you know, sometimes if you watch other couples, sometimes there is a lot of foreplay and lead up and play. And sometimes they just get right into it. And some of that, we do the same thing depending on mood and scenario, time, everything. But it is fun to just kind of, I like to tease people too, and so we can kind of grow that build up, and you know, yeah, it's just fun for people. I think I like for people to watch that, and then yeah. it builds the anticipation for them as well. Well, it is. I mean, you know, it's not to compare this to theater, but it is. It's a lot like theater. You know, you're building the anticipation mm-hmm. of the of that final act. Because we're the same way when we're watching other people. You yeah, know, you're you're kind of like, ooh, what's going to happen next? And yeah, exactly. Where are they going with this? And right, yeah. and and what's the next plot point? And you know, how is the what yeah. position are they going to do next? And what might they do next? Um, and it's always nice to see. And you know, it's it's funny because, and I know I've talked about it before. One of the things I like to do is it, is to pick you up. Um, mm-hmm. And because I again, that's one of those things that most people don't expect. And so if you do it, then it's like, ooh, wow, and that's you know kind of cool. Um, but talking about the world melting away, uh, I'm reminded of when we did the Sex Ed in the City class on uh, G Spot. Yeah. Um, it was very much that. It was very much, you know, 
once, you know, I, there was a little bit of nerves because that was the first time I had done that, like truly in a studio audience kind of thing. You know, there was 20 people watching, um, you know, to, but to start and within the first few minutes, it was suddenly the world was gone and it was just you and me. Um, and, you know, you take a breath to look around and everybody's sitting on the edge of their seats. I think it's obvious that that happens, that the rest of them have melted away and it's just you and I. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I love that. And it's kind of fun to share the ability that we have to do that with people. Yeah. I like to share that passion, even if it's not directly, if it's just by them watching because it, it kind of draws them into things as well. And it, then it becomes a more of a spectator sport than just a sit and watch kind of thing. Yeah, and it yeah. goes back to the reason I like, you know, if I'm going to watch porn, I want to watch amateur porn. And I like the, you know, the the live cam stuff, you know, um, because you want to see that's a, it always feels a little more genuine yeah. um, than the scripted porn does. Well, of course, the scripted porn doesn't feel genuine. But, you know, it's, you know, I'd rather have something a little more intimate and, and sexy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question? Uh, let's see. Let me go back We've, through We're still a little here. short on time here. and we. Uh, oh, wow. I know, right? Lost. We didn't talk long enough. We need to ramble a little more. Um, let me go through and see if we can find a good one here. Hmm. This is a good one. Oh, she's got the wicked look in her eyes. Who do you <laughs> spill your sexy secrets to other than your lover? Who do you tell? Oh, no, there's no doubt. I, this one's easy. <laughs> Lolo lady. Ah. Uh, yeah, the lady knows everything. Um, I've told that poor girl more things than she probably... <laughs> <laughs> there, there's times that she's like, seriously, why are you telling me this? Like, because I have to tell somebody. Um, but yeah, I everything that goes on, we always do the, the after the weekend debrief mm-hmm. um, where I go through everything that we did and do and whatnot and on Friday nights or on Fridays we go f- to the weekend preview about what we're gonna do and yeah so it's 100% Lolo Lady she knows everything yeah poor girl no <laughs> She like, can I put my earmuffs on? Sometimes, yet? sometimes she's <laughs> I like, I didn't want to know that. Why, why are you telling me this? I don't want to know this stuff. And I'm like, shut up, woman. I'm trying to tell you a story. <laughs> she's like, please, please stop. And then I put my penis. She's like, please stop. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, love it. But yeah, and you know those times that we've traveled together and we're in Melbourne. She's the one that's always like, oh. Go to the sauna. Go to the gay sauna. Yeah. Go to the gay sauna. And then the next morning at breakfast, she's like, so... Tell me about how it. How slutty were you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, definitely Lola Letty. How about you? All right. Um, I don't think I really have anybody that I tell everything to like that. Ooh, are you taking, uh, are you taking um, not interviews, but resumes uh, for people? You know, I'm sure there's some listeners out there who would like you to be able to tell them everything. Right. No, I, I've got one of my good friends I'll tell some things to, but I think it's also situational in that, you know, it's hard to find the time to always spill everything and be private enough to give the details. Um, but I don't really, no, I would say there's nobody, I don't have a Lolo lady like you do for that, but I also don't feel like I need that. And I need that. I need yeah. that person that I can bounce off ideas and and things. So it's nice that I. It's nice that she's available and at least receiving. <laughs> Whether she wants to. Or Whether not. she wants to or not, she's yet to hang up on me. Yeah. It'll happen. Don't worry. One day he'll do something. I only got to be patient. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, all right. Are we going to wrap this up then? Yeah, I think so. All right. Cool. Well. Uh, we are uh, always looking for more questions, comments, and rude remarks. So if you've got yours, uh, feel free to send them to us. Uh, you can email us at uh, theatomsoflove at gmail.com, or you can Twitter verse us. We are at By the By Podcast, and on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash By the By Podcast. Um, the website is www.bythebye.com.au. Um, We've got a pendulum party coming up May yes, 19th. Very soon. I'm hoping that this comes out before May 19th. But it will. if it hasn't, you missed an awesome party. My God, what was wrong with you? <laughs> um, we only talk about it every week, people. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the pendulum party is going to be kind of awesome. If you have 
ever had a curious a curious bone in your body, and uh, you know curiosity killed the cat. Mm-hmm. So um, it's because the cat didn't ever you know get to play and, and try. Right. And you can be curious without necessarily playing. That's right. I you mean, can watch. We, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to play, but at the same time, if you just want to watch and see what happens and what goes on, come out and do that. We will happily put yeah. on a couple of shows for you. Yeah. Um, thrice nightly. And we'll have the glory hole back up. That's right. Oh, I'm yes. excited. That's a glorious hole. Um, yeah, and the last time, yeah, we almost made a guy cry. Mm-hmm. I mean, because we were that good, not because we were bad. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. It's a, a it's a great experience. So, uh, May 19th, you can find tickets on our website, on our secret spots website, www.oursecretspot.com.au. Um, I tweet it every so often. We're mm-hmm. Facebooking it every so often. So yeah, just come and, uh, yeah, check it out. Um, we also now have on the Sex Ed in the City website, www.sexedinthecity.com, we're putting, uh, there's a calendar there, and we're putting on the calendar where we will be. There's mm-hmm. different meet and greets. Um, we were recently at an RHP, uh, Our Secret Spot meet and greet. Um, we've, all the parties that we go to, we're trying to post where either the Adams of Love or Miss Jeff are going to be. Yeah. That way, if you want to come out and see us, talk to us. We love meeting people and talking to people. Uh, so that's uh, that, that calendar is is up and going. I need to link that on our main website. That yeah. way you can, like, cross streams. Don't I cross thought that streams. wasn't allowed. Well, at the end of the movie, it is. Oh, okay. So hopefully we're not at the end of our movie. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, so uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys hopefully at the... Uh, Pendulum party. <laughs>